Hey guys, welcome to my mercenary class overview video for the Phoenix Dark Age Camelot server. Today we're going to be talking about the mercenary class, its role in a group, um, some spec lines, some spec options, realm abilities, general fight tactics, and maybe a couple uh, items you want to make sure you have on you. Uh, let's go ahead and um, I guess talk about the role of a mercenary in group. Uh, mercenaries kind of fill a lot of different roles, um, pretty versatile class. Um, I guess the, the primary function may be uh, as an offensive tank, uh, more of a damage dealing tank. You can you know, obviously do a, quite a lot of damage with, with dual styles, um, high damage styles and whatnot. You can also do a really good job peeling and playing as a defensive tank and just floating as an interrupter. Um, you have a lot of snares now, so you can kind of keep things controlled. Um, recent buff to Mercs, they get a back snare now in their dual wield line, which is great. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but we'll go ahead and jump into um, some style lines here. I'll go into game here, and we'll uh, we'll talk about what makes mercenaries unique, which is the dual wield um, weapon line. I'm just going to hit the high points. Um, I'm not going to go over every single style in this line. I will go over um, the styles you'll be using uh, most in a group setting. Not really going to touch on solo type stuff, um, but mainly things you'll be using in a group. Uh, first, I guess the style we'll start with is the level 50 dual wield style, dual shadows. Um, this is a, uh, a pretty hard hitting style. It's a 0.83 growth rate frontal style. Has a pretty potent bleed on it. Um, does a fair amount of damage, um, pretty decent damage style. And, and it adds that bleed, which you know can actually add up to quite a bit of damage. Um, Keep in mind here, bleeds do not break snares, mezzes, roots, so feel free to apply bleeds to targets as much as you want. Just give you a nice little bit of bonus damage. Um, and like I said, this is a 0.83 growth rate with a medium to hit bonus. Um, hit bonus is important because it'll obviously increase your chance of landing the style and not missing and wasting an, an attack. Um, so I always like to kind of consider that when choosing which style I want to use, especially if a target's stunned or something. Uh, but next we'll move on to your side style, a level 29 dual wield style called Flank. Now this is one of your most important styles. Um, one, because it does a pretty decent chunk of damage and it has a good follow-up for damage. Uh, the growth rate on this is 0.85. Um, the great thing about the style also is it applies a snare to the target for 12 seconds, um, which is nice for when targets are kiting away from you. You know, you can keep them snared. Um, so they have a harder time moving around in the fight and getting away from you. Um, so definitely keep in mind, uh, you know, the snare function when choosing what style you want to use. Uh, the only issue I have with this style um, is the tip bonus is um, there's no bonus. So you have about, as you can see here, 14.75 chance to miss, which isn't great. That's a pretty high chance to miss um, for a style. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, going forward, um, we'll look at the follow-up style to Flink, the level 39 dual wield style, Shadows Rain. Um, like I said, this is the follow-up to Flink. Um, it's a, it's going to be your hardest hitting style for a mercenary. The growth rate is 1.05. So it's a really, really high hitting style, or sorry, really high damage style. And it also applies an attack speed um, reduction to your target, which is nice uh, to apply on tanks uh, if you can. The uh, as I said earlier, the you know this is going to be your hardest hitting style chain. Um, if you have a target slammed and you just want to pump out a lot of damage, this is the chain to go with. While keeping in mind that the first style flank has a uh, no hit no to hit bonus, so you have a higher chance of missing that. Moving on, we'll go on to the uh, the newly buffed back style called Penumbra. Now this is a um, I believe the growth rate is around, what is it, 0.65. So quite a bit lower than flank, which is, what was it, 0.85 or somewhere around there. Um, it's going to be lower damage than dual shadows, your frontal style, but it applies a back snare, medium to hit bonus, so you're not going to miss this nearly as much. It's, as I said about flank, it's great for keeping targets close to you. It's a great way to uh, peel a target if you want to slam or numb a tank and then hit it with a penumbra or a flank. It'll leave it snared. You can peel off your casters with this, peel off yourself. I um, mean, like I said, keep a caster from moving around in the fight um, and unable to get away from you since you're going to be spamming snare styles on it. Super important. 
Uh, moving forward, um, you, there are there's another back chain called Shadow's Edge. It's the uh, level six style. I'm not really going to use this very often because it doesn't have that snare function. The growth rate on this is 0.69, so it's not even that much higher than Penumbra. Uh, it does have a follow-up style, however, um, Eclipse, which is, um, I'll show it here if I landed it. This style is a uh, point, yeah, 0.92 growth rate, so it's a pretty high growth rate. This chain's decent for damage. Flank has higher damage, obviously. These have to hit bonus though, so that's kind of nice. Um, so you can use this if you have a target slam for damage in place of the flank chain. It's up to you whether you want to risk using a no to hit bonus style or with higher damage or maybe more consistent hits with lower damage with the back chain, Shadow's Edge into Eclipse. I don't really use this. I normally go for dual shadows, just spam dual shadows or go with the flank chain. And if I'm at the back, I'm going to use Penumbra for the snare, typically. Uh, moving on from there, there's Reflection, which is your after parry style into Hypnotic Darkness. This is just your standard parry chain. Um, second part, Hypnotic Darkness applies a seven second stun. I'm not really going to use this very often. I'm going to spec Shield um, for my spec, which gives me an anytime stun, which we're going to move on to now to talk about with the Shield line. Um, but keep in mind, you can use that parry chain if you'd like but it's not super imperative to group play. The, uh, the reason you can spec shield on mercenaries here so easily compared to on other servers um, is this slash switch macro. I'll explain how this works. Um, the slash switch macro, and to make a macro, it's slash macro. Or I'll type it out here. Maybe you can kind of see slash macro. And I just named this, let's just name it shield. And if I want to switch between, um, to put my offhand weapon onto my shield slot or my shield onto my offhand slot, as you can see here, how it changes when I click this macro, you would type slash macro, shield, shield is just the label, slash switch, and then offhand, because you're swapping the offhand slot. And then it's going to be your, the, the number um, of your inventory slot. So I'm swapping my first slot in my inventory. So I would swap one. If I wanted to swap my third slot in my inventory, say this thrust offhand weapon, it would be um, slash switch space offhand space three. And you can see here, I'll click this and it swaps my, this weapon into my shield slot and my shield swap, sorry, shield weapon back into my offhand slot. However, um, I'm slash, and I'll just use this offhand, so I'll, you know, for slot one is what I'm wanting to use. I'll just swap my slot one, but that's how you make that macro. And that's why um, you're able to easily swap your shield um, on Phoenix. This isn't a feature on many other servers, and especially not live. So this makes shield mercs come into play a lot easier here. Anyway, moving on, I'll talk about the shield line. There's only two real styles you'll use here. The main style, level 42 shield style, slam. It's a nine second anytime stun. I know it's a hit bonus, um, but nine second stun is pretty big for one, peeling off people, friends, yourself, and two, to apply damage, um, to stop things like mocks, say a bard mocks, you can slam it, it takes it out for nine seconds. Um, different ways to use that. Keep in mind how stun immunity works. Um, stun immunity is multiplied or sorry is uh, calculated by multiplying the duration of the stun times five so slam will give a 45 second immunity timer nine times five 45 uh, so that's a pretty long stun immunity and that's the reason we're going to look at numb here in a second but we'll, we'll just go through slam a couple times i can slam a target and then you know use my flank chain on it um, what i can do is uh, slam a target and then maybe go to the back and hit a penumbra, leave it snared for 12 seconds. Uh, keep in mind, um, applying low duration snares like um, penumbra and flank, which are 12 second snares on slam targets, isn't the best use of it. Because if you apply that snare early in the slam, you know, they're gonna be, the snare duration is gonna be taking away while they're stunned. So when they come out of the slam, they're only gonna be snared for like four seconds. Um, so that's why I like using the level three shield style called Numb. Now this applies a two second 
stun to the target with a, and it also leaves them with a 10 second immunity timer. The duration of the stun, remember, times five, two times five is obviously 10. And with this, once you're buffed, you have haste and dex quick and things like that. You can numb a target, swap to your dual wield, go around to the back, hit a penumbra, and be out within around two seconds, especially if you're buffed. You know, you're swinging pretty quickly, especially if you're using a fast shield. I like to use a 2.8 speed shield. Once I have my dex quick and haste buffs, I'm really swinging fast. So I can hit a target with a numb, go around the back, hit a penumbra, and then dip out. And then in 10 seconds, once their immunity fades, I can come back, do it again, or slam them, applying a longer stun. Also just, you know, managing stun immunities is an important part of this game, especially when dealing with tanks. Um, so, yep, that's why I like numb and slam. Um, I numb a lot, obviously slam when I need a longer stun, but if I'm just wanting to apply a snare on a tank that's on top of me, I might just numb it. Um, the next shield ability you get is Guard. Now this allows you to block for your teammates. Um, if you're within 250 units of them and select them and you press Guard. Um, I don't have a teammate, so I can't really show how this ability works, but you just target your, your group mate, um, press the Guard button, and then you will toggle the Guard on and off of them. If you're within 250 units of them, you have a chance to block. This is a great way to uh, mitigate some damage um, onto your teammates. Say a Say a Cabalist is getting stuck down by a Veilwalker or something, you can throw Guard on them, and then you can try to peel that Veilwalker with your various snares. However, you have to have your shield out in order to guard. So what you could do is keep your shield out. Um, this requires a bit of you know quick fingers, I suppose, but it's not too hard once you get it figured out. I'm guarding. Let's pretend there's a on my ground target right here is my caster friend. I want to snare out this training dummy. I'll swap to my um, dual wield. So I'll quickly hit my switch macro, hit flank, and then swap immediately back to my shield using my switch macro. And I'll be able to guard in between my swings. So I'll hit him with the fl flank, I missed, swap back to my shield, go back to my dual wield, go back to my shield after I land the style, and continuously swapping back to my shield in between hits so I have a chance to block while I'm trying to snare out this target. This is a great thing to use on armsmen, um, anything with a shield really. Always try to keep your shield out if you can while you're guarding. And also if you're trying to peel off yourself, having your shield out in between hits to block hits, say a warrior is trying to slam you, it's just it's a good play to, it's a good thing to keep doing, it's a good habit to have. So always keep your shield out if you can. Moving on, we're gonna talk about the slash and thrust lines. I'm really only gonna mention one style in slash. It's the only slash style I use. And it's this side snare called Side Slicer. It's the level 21 style. It's pretty much an identical style with a lower growth rate to flank. It's a 12 second snare, no to hit bonus. However, I can use it while having my um, shield out. So I don't have to you know, have two weapons out to use flank. For example, if you have your shield out, you can't use flank because you must be dual wielding to use the style. It allows me to try to peel off maybe a friend or myself while, having, while keeping my shield out, which just means I don't have to keep swapping back to my shield and dual wield. Also, one little tip. Um, let's say you snared a target previously, um, and you, you snared it maybe eight seconds ago. It snares about to fade in about you know four seconds or so. You walk up to it, and you want to re-snare it. If you walk up to it and try to flank it, and they have PBT, what could happen is the PBT, the blade turn, will absorb your main hand hit, and then your offhand hit will, could swing and break the snare while you know, essentially failing the, the style you're trying to use since your main hand got absorbed by the blade turn, breaking the snare. So what I like to do, if I can, is just try to one-hand it with my shield out, with side slicer. That way, if I hit blade turn, I have no offhand that's gonna swing and break the remaining snare, and then maybe I can go back and try to, you know, after the blade turns faded, hit it again with the uh, the side slicer. That's just a little useful tip you might find. You know, you might have some issues breaking snares with your dual wield if they have PBT. Moving on to thrust, um, and I, I can't show you this um, directly because I'm not thrust spec. But if you um, find my Phoenix Armsman video, you can see 
my thoughts on this style chain and how I use it. Uh, Wilvern Fang is the style I want to go for. It's a two-part anytime snare. It chains off of the level 18 thrust style called Tranquilize, which is a no to hit bonus anytime style. However, it does chain into this 27 second snare uh, Wilvern Fang. It's a two part anytime snare. The benefits on this snare versus things like Flink, Side Slicer, and Penumbra is it's a very long duration snare, 27 seconds. So you can essentially snare a target and then kind of forget about it for 27 seconds because they'll be sitting there snared. You don't have to reapply a snare so quickly. Um, what I would do with this is slam and then use Tranquilize, the anytime style, into Wilvern Fang, and then they're going to be snared out for 27 seconds. Much more efficient than um, simply slamming a target and then hitting Flank on it, which is only 12 seconds, or Penumbra, which is 12 seconds as well. Like I said, um, it'll leave them snared for roughly about four seconds after they come out of slam, whereas this will leave them snared for about you know 15 or so seconds after they come out of slam. Um, maybe 16, I can't remember the exact math. Minus nine, minus 1.5 from swing speed. Anyway, um, much better to apply longer snare when investing a long stun immunity, if that makes sense. And I talk about this in a lot more detail in my armsman video where I focus on peeling since I view armsman as a defensive class and I use this quite a lot. So if you're curious about this Wilvern thing um, and just in general peeling, um, stun immunities, things like that, how to manage that, check out my armsman video. But now we're gonna move on um, to some general spec options on Mercenary. I'll go to, let's see, we'll, we'll pull up the uh, character planner. And this is my current spec. I'm 39 slash, just for my damage type. Um, 50 dual wield, 42 shield, and then the rest parry. I like this, I like the slash damage type. It's um, strong against things like druids, um, champions, heroes, wardens, um, any hib scale strong against. It's strong against Berserkers, Savages, um, that's pretty much it on meta, I believe. Mid-studded and leather, obviously, but you don't fight a lot of leather in group. Um, this is weak against things like healers, Slash is weak against healers, um, and pretty much anything that's not studded or leather on mid. Also weak against things like Bards um, and Blade Masters when fighting Hibernia. It's a decent damage type. I just like Side Slicer. And I like the level 50 dual wield style. If you were to go thrust, I would recommend going for 44 thrust for that two part anytime snare. And to do that, you're gonna have to drop your dual wield down to 47, which I don't love, but I, I definitely see the merits of this. So you have to drop parry down a little bit too. I certainly see the merits of this because this, this 40 or 27 second anytime snare chain is really good. However, I really like Dual Shadows sometimes. Um, thrust is a really good damage type. It's strong against mid-chain. It's neutral to everything on Hibernia, so that's nice. You're not hitting bonus or negative against anything on Hib, but it's really good against Hib, or sorry, mid-chain, which is healer, shamans, things like that, things you might be hitting a lot of. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe look into using Thrust. Um, and if you like the idea of using that long two-part Thrust chain, Go thrust um, if you don't mind losing dual shadows, the level 50 dual world style. You can also go crush. Crush is neutral to everything on Midgard. It's strong against bards and blade masters on Hib. Pretty much Hib studded and leather. Um, so you can go that damage type if you want. I don't really recommend you using any of the actual crush styles in that case, but you're specking it for the damage type, which is okay. That's up to you. Uh, there's no real wrong answer, but I just prefer slash or thrust. And mainly Slash because I like Dual Shadows and I kind of like Side Slicer. Like I say, I completely see the merits in going Thrust. Now we'll quickly look at Realm Abilities and I'll just make my rank, you know, let's, let's go rank 6. Um, first RA you're going to want to get Determination. Uh, it gives you CC reduction. Um, on any tank I would certainly go debt early. It's pretty cheap here, it's only 22 points. Um, the next RA I like to get is probably purge two allows you to purge slam snare combos get into the fight quicker 
allows you to purge a mez or a slam when you're on a low target. Say you're on a druid and a hero comes and slams you and the druid's at like 20%. If you can purge that and kill the druid, great. Um, you can also use this when you're guarding. Say you're guarding a catalyst and there's like a Veilwalker and a Blademaster trying to kill it. You're the only thing staying between the cab and those two tanks killing it with guard. If they slam you, you can no longer block for them since you're stunned. If you can purge that, you can continue being defensive for that cab. Um, just another way to use purge. Uh, moving on, um, as far as offensive RAs, I like Mastery of the Arms, which is your attack speed um, realm ability, it increases your attack speed. This is nice. Um, so you can keep applying snares easier. Say you miss a, um, a snare, your offhand hits or something, your main hand doesn't, and you're snared as well. Maybe with a, a higher attack speed, you can reapply a snare before they get out of range so you can stay on that target. Um, it helps you just do more damage with more swings, but just continuously applying those snares and having a target never be able to get away from you is super important. So I like going some mastery of arms. Um, you can go Mastery of Pain, um, increases your crit chance if you'd like. Also, Avoidance of Magic is nice because um, if you're fighting a lot of caster groups, see yourself taking a lot of caster damage. You can pump some points into Avoidance of Magic, which is a magic resist realm ability, just to make you a little bit more tanky to that. And those are kind of the, uh, the first RAs I would get. Once you get super high rank, you can start you know, maybe putting some more points to Aug Strength or master more Mastery of a pain or maybe IP or something if you want. But initially, Mastery of the Arms, Debt, Purge, maybe some AOM and Mastery of Pain is what I like to look at. Um, now moving back into game, we're going to talk about some mercenary specific abilities. Things like Flurry, which is just a little instant, a very short range instant DD. Doesn't hit super hard, but it can kind of help top off some damage if you have a target really low. I like to use this when I have a target almost in kill range, just to kind of surprise a druid, use it to help spike some damage. The uh, the delves on this are generally incorrect, so on that one only available to yeah. So this is kind of right. It's, it's essentially like a, another offhand hit, kind of is how you think of it. Just another way of spiking damage is how I use this. Uh, dirty tricks. Uh, what this does is it augments your melee attacks. Um, when you land a melee attack, it um, will debuff, it will cause a, uh, your target to have a fumble debuff on it, which increases its chance to fumble, um, which is quite nice. I use this one, one when I'm dying to a tank, maybe a, a tank train's trying to kill me. I'll keep my shield out and I'll just start applying dirty tricks to all the tanks that I can. It applies off of your melee hit, so you have to you know, hit them in order to apply dirty tricks. I'll use this when I'm trying to peel off uh, maybe a caster. Maybe I, there, there's a caster on my Cabalist or something, or sorry, a Veilwalker on my Cabalist. I can't stun the Veilwalker because it's stun immune. What I might do is pop dirty tricks and then just start hitting the Veilwalker. Ideally, I'll be you know, using my, uh, my back snare, swap to shield to guard as he's kiting. Back snare, swap to shield to guard. Hopefully he continues kiting and I can get him out. And this is what Dirty Tricks looks like. There's the activation. And now it's applying every hit. So I'll use this as a defensive way to, uh, or defensive ability to get my casters out or to protect myself. That's a great way to um, stop damage from enemy tanks. Uh, the next thing we're gonna look at, charge. Now this delve is definitely wrong. Um, you definitely don't move 75% faster. Um, you're definitely not immune to CC. Charge here just allows you to sprint without using endurance for a short period. Um, if you can see here, I'll start using it. I'll turn on sprint and you can see my endurance is actually going up instead of down. So it just allows me to sprint for free for a short period of time, which is nice. Um, endurance can be an issue here. This helps manage your endurance. Um, and that's pretty much it for Merc only abilities. Um, you have Enhanced Evade, you have Stoicism, things like that. And enhanced Evade allows you to evade um, in a 360 radius. And uh, Stoicism is another CC reduction percentage that stacks on top of debt, which is quite nice. Uh, with Determination 9 and Stoicism, single target mezes last about 6 or 7 seconds on you with full resist. Um, so you're not going to get CC'd out long term on a Mercenary. Next we'll move into some 
um, items you might want to have, um, some weapon choices, things like that. First, we'll start with weapon choices. I like using a very slow main hand. I'm using this 4.0 speed um, slash main hand. And then typically I will use a faster off hand. This allows you to swing quicker while still doing um, quite a bit of damage with your main hand. The off hand being fast allows you to just swing a little bit faster than using a slower off hand. Um, I use, as I mentioned earlier, a fast shield. I use a 2.8 speed small, sorry, 2.8 speed small shield. Um, that way I can just get my slams off quicker. I can do the whole uh, numb, whoops, numb into a, I don't know if I can land it, numb into a snare before they come out of the stun. I'm missing all my styles, but that's okay. But yeah, a slow main hand coupled with a fast off hand and obviously a fast shield is the way to go in my opinion. Um, you can also use a crossbow to interrupt. Say you get rooted, you're rooted for about eight seconds. You can pull out your, um, sorry, your short bow, I should say, and start shooting a druid or a caster or something. Just nice for interrupts. Um, moving on, um, some items you may want to have, some use charges, I should say. This item called Skin Scrap of Legion is an instant endurance charge. It's quite nice. You can use it while in combat, just as an end heal. Has a two minute reuse timer. Another item, Heart of Legion. Um, similar concept, except for instead of being an endurance heal, it's just a heal for your health. If you're dying or something like that, you wanna use this and a heal pot together. That's gonna be a pretty big spike in health. Another charge that you're definitely gonna wanna have on one of your crafted pieces is this DD charge. I just throw it on my boots. Um, you can probably throw it on your short bow or something if you want, but it's up to you. But what I use this for is to break speeds on um, like on incoming. So say a tank group's pushing into us and we're gonna be a little defensive, maybe even pull. I'll DD charge a tank on ink just to break its speed. So it can't run on speed six into my back line and get on my casters. I may also use this in the Milva fight as an instant interrupt. Say a caster's open um, off to the side, I can't get to it to melee it. It needs to be erupted, maybe it'll kill me or kill a friend. I'll just throw this DD charge on it, just to erupt it for once, like you know, like maybe three or four seconds. I'll use it to interrupt a druid or a healer or something if I'm trying to kill a target, I'm trying to erupt the heals. Um, it shares a reuse timer with the other charges we talked about, two minute reuse timer. So you're gonna have to make a choice about what you need. Fortunately, I have some clips from um, RVR. Uh, so we'll be able to kind of look at some of the um, some of the concepts we discussed and see how they work in practice. I'll explain what I'm doing and sort of the uh, the mindset behind it. Uh, this fight, we're fighting a hib tank group. They have two bards, two druids, a warden, and then three offensive tanks. Uh, we're a three tank, three caster alp hybrid. Um, at the start of this fight, our sorcerer here gets kind of left behind, so I have to kind of help him get out of here. Um, this has a bit of damage and some peeling involved, so I'll kind of go through this. Um, this guy right here that he's mezzing is a bard. I'm on the second bard, and then out of, out of, uh, out of the, the screen to our left, there are two druids. Uh, our sorcerer gets some good CC, but kind of gets caught in the process, and we have to kind of fight our way out uh, because we get, you know, folded on by their, you know, their other two tanks. So I'll go ahead and start the fight here. We're gonna try to um, mez out this bard since this bard that he just met is purges. You'll see here. I decided I wanna kill this bard since he has this one mezzed. It purges. Before this bard is able to get me spells off, I decided to go to him. I asked the sork to mez the bard I was just on since he's, mez he's not mez immune. Uh, we swap here. I slam this bard. Our sorcerer mezzes this uh, Raven Arm Bard, and we try to kill this Bard here. Our sorcerer gets mezzes on both druids. So we have right now, um, the two of us took out two druids, one Bard, and then we're trying to damage another Bard. We forced um, this Bard that I'm on right here to purge already. And then as you see, this druid purges, the other druid purges, and then this Bard purges. So this sorcerer and I just forced four purges. He's not necessarily in the best position, but at least we got a lot of big um, Merlin Villies out. We try to kill this bard. However, all the support's now free since they purged the mezzes. He gets healed. And as you can see here, 
there are two tanks coming back to kill our sorcerer. And if you can see, our group is back here where my mouse is. Um, so we're quite far away from everyone else. This is a Veilwalker and a Blademaster coming to kill our sort since they realized he was left behind. So at this point, I know I have to peel these guys and potentially you know, guard my Sork a lot. I'll go through here. I'm trying to slam this guy just to stop damage. Throw guard on my Sork friend. Trying to land slams. I pop dirty tricks there, if you saw, because I know my, my guy's going to take a lot of damage here. I just want to stop as much of it as I can. I slam this guy to stop damage, um, and I'm trying to apply dirty tricks as I go. I get a snare on him after I slam. He'll be snared for about four seconds when he comes out of the slam immunity, or sorry, the stun. Um, and now I'm snaring, and I just I just snared this blade master, and I swap back to my shield. I'm trying to reapply the snare, maybe do a little bit of damage. In between swings, I'm swapping back to my shield bow, and he's already snared, so I don't necessarily want to break it yet. He goes back to the sort, gives me his back, so I hit him with another snare. Swap back to my shield. Now I'm trying to snare, snare this Velwalker again to get my Sork out. I hit him with a side slicer. Accidentally swapped to my dual because I got a little bit uh, lost, I guess, in my own head. Swap back to my shield though. And now I'm just trying to block as much as I can. I'm snaring and I'm swapping back to my shield between most hits. And we're able to eventually get the Sork out through a lot of snares and guard. This is a pretty chaotic fight, but we're able to get a little bit of space, hopefully, off of this. They're dedicating two tanks, and we took out a bunch of support in the process. And you see now, with the Veilker being snared and the, Vel or, and the Blade Master sort of coming back to me, our Sork's able to get out. And me being back here is not the end of the world, because I can just pick up whatever's left over, maybe keep this Veilker snared out, or get on support later. I'm going to show you another fight. Uh, this is from the start of a fight. I'm going to show you how some inks work, especially against a hip tank group. Um, this is the same setup we were before. Three tanks, three casters. Uh, we're fighting a four tank, four support hip group. Um, so at the start of the fight, my main priority is to break speeds. Um, an easy target for me is either what I like to go for typically are heroes, which is their main peeler, which is this Lurikeen right here. This is their hero or their main damage, which is their Veilwalker. Um, the Veilwalker in a hip group is probably going to be the main source of damage, um, so slowing him down is nice to just give your casters and support some time to, uh, to get in position and whatnot. I choose to break speed on this Veilwalker, so what I'm going to do is target him and then use my instant DD for my boots, as we talked about earlier. I break speed and I immediately 180 around and keep kiting. As you can see down here in my chat log, or my combat log, I should say. You see you hit you, you he for 61. That breaks his speed, also breaks mine, but I'm not too worried about breaking mine. I just want to stop him from getting into my back line. And I immediately kite back and look for threats. The biggest threat to a tank is probably the hero of the Blade Master. They both have slam, so they both can easily peel you out. So I want to kind of do my best to stay away from them unless I have a chance to peel them without a ton of risk. So I keep kiting here, uh, seeing what's going to happen. I see I have my Merc friend here, and this hero is right here. So we can we have a chance to double team him. Um, it's hard for him to get through um, a blade turn and a shield with two people trying to slam you. We're, odds are we should be able to land the slammer, the numb, first. Unfortunately, here we do. I land a numb. I choose to numb him just because I don't want to commit to a nine second slam yet with a 45 second stun immunity. I land numb. I'm able to quickly get a side center off and get out of there before the numb stun wears off. Unfortunately, I get mezzed out right after I get the stun, which isn't the end of the world. Them pushing past me is not too bad. The mez only lasts for about seven seconds. So I'm able to sit this mez. The hero is not able to push since we just peeled him out. He's going to be stunnable as well when I get out of this mez, which is nice. And I'm not in a terrible position. I'm close to their support. As I come out of this mez, this hero is going to see me out of mez and decide he needs to peel me, which is not a bad idea on his part. He comes to me, and we're going to get in a peel battle. Um, at this point, he's stunnable again, since I only numbed him earlier. He only had a 10-second stun immunity. So we try to fight. Um, I'm trying to land. Actually, I try to numb him again. I don't necessarily even want to slam him here. However, he lands a slam. 
gets the snare off on me. I decide to purge it because one, I don't want to get left behind with the snare at this point. I'm going to be slammed out for nine seconds. And then when I come out of the slam, snared for a few more seconds. What I want to do, since I know this guy's um, slammable at this point, is immediately purge as soon as he turns his back and land a slam. I'll apply a short duration snare. But I'm leaving him in the dust completely immobile for nine seconds. I want to create as much space here as I can since the fight has progressed so far away. If I just numb and snare him here, he'll still be able to make up some ground. I want to completely, I want to create as much space here as I can since the fight has moved so far away at this point. So I slam him and I get away as, as best I can. And then I, I'm free to pick up something like this guy's a warden. I'm able to pick him up a little bit, keep him interrupted since we have some CC. In hindsight, I probably should have gone directly for this bard. I didn't see the bard was um, close enough to me. He's going to get some demesses out before I can get to him. Unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Now at this point, I'm just trying to pick up support, leave them behind. I slam the bard here so he's further away and pick up more support as they're trying to push. Um, we're able to get a lot of space. As you can see, our cab is super far back. Um, we have a lot of space for him. He's our main damage source. At this point, I'm just trying to interrupt support while he's trying to kill something. Slam a druid. Um, my sword gets caught again. So I just try to apply a snare to the Veilwalker. I see the Veilwalker stuns my sword, so at this point I need to slam him to stop the damage. However, my sword purges here, but I still slam him anyway just to create more distance. I didn't necessarily have to slam him there, but I didn't realize my sword was going to purge and I wasn't able to cancel the slam fast enough. Um, if I would have, if I knew he was going to purge, I would have just left him snared and let him get away. I like to save slams for um, to completely stop damage on targets that can't get away, um, or to set up damage, or to uh, counter peel. So that slam wasn't the best since he was already snared out, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. We have space. We killed a blade master in that point. I had slammed a druid before, and I kind of freed up the sword here. At this point, I want to snare this Veilwalker. Um, and then go back in on support so we can pressure something else, um, stop heals, stop this druid from rooting um, my support or my caster line. Yeah, I'm just going to stick down this guy, do a little bit of damage, and then just spam snares on him so he can't really get into the fight very well. See this uh, blade master comes out of slam, or sorry, mez here. So I go to maybe challenge him to a fight, but I'm not able to get to him since he kind of pre-kited me. And I go to get back on this druid here. I see the hero right here. And as I said earlier, this guy's the biggest threat to me with peels. So I decide to just kind of kite him, get away from him. You know, I don't want him to get me, so I just run away. He decides it's not worth chasing me around and tries to get back into the fight. At that point, I can run back in on this druid. I continue interrupting him. This bard here is mocked, casting with cuts on him. So I swat to my shield and try to slam him. He's stunning me in though, so he's able to continue casting. At this point, just trying to rub some support still. At this point, also, our casters are kind of covered. Our cabs here kind of getting destroyed. Our sorks over here with a veil walker on him. Um, I could go to peel. I probably should maybe, but I don't want this druid to sit here and free cast. Um, what he'll be able to do is interrupt our support, um, interrupt all of our casters. This mercenary right here and this armsman, these are appealers, so I just let them do their job and I don't step on their toes and I continue to interrupt support. Just bouncing between the druids here, trying to leave them snared after I hit so I can get back to them easier. They can't cut away from me. Here's a warden um, trying to just to stop his heals, slam them, and then get back on support. At this point, um, their tanks are back here. I try to peel this Veilwalker. Um, our other mercenaries peeling their hero, but I want to get this Veilwalker sort of away from our casters. I hit this guy with another numb into a flank, so he's snared for two seconds, and I only leave him with a 10 second stun immunity, so he's able to be slammed later. Back on the warden, go to the druid. I see the heroes coming to me. He snared, I could have just kited away here, um, probably should have. But what I decided to do is slam this druid and then get in a, a, a peel battle with this hero. What I don't want to do is just continue hitting this druid right here and allow this guy to peel me for free. I want to put up a peel fight, make it worth his time, and maybe not get peeled at all because hopefully I'll win the battle. So I go and I try to slam him. We get in a peel war. I'm able to win it. 
I slam him, try to snare him. I have a nine second stun here, so I can hit this druid once or twice more. But right now, I want to get away from this guy so he doesn't peel me. And at this point, a scout adds and starts shooting the druid. So we kind of pull away. We continue the fight. Um, they're able to pull away from the scout, but I decide not to hit this druid here. I would have um, typically been just sitting on this guy spamming snare styles, but I wanted him to get away from the scout for more of a fair fight. And that's kind of the uh, the perspective of a mercenary against a tanker group. Um, kind of gives you a big uh, idea of how incomings work until you know mid fight. Here's another fight I'd like to show you from a few months ago. This is before mercenaries got their back snare buff. Um, however, the concepts still apply. We're fighting a three caster mid group here, so it's a little different than the fights we saw previously versus the hip tank group. Uh, in this fight, I want to show you the concept, I, I guess, of splitting with your tanks to interrupt multiple casters and then trying to converge uh, when you have an opportunity. The fight doesn't go super well for us, but you can still see at least the, um, the concepts in action and the thought behind it. Uh, we'll start the fight here. Uh, they're fighting this as a circle fight, mostly, so we're kind of able to easily get on top of their casters with our tanks. <clears throat> in this fight, we are Paladin, Armsman, Mercenary, and then Sort Cap Thurg. Um, and then Claire Fryer. So we'll continue on the fight. At this point, I just got mezzed early. Uh, our Armsman gets mezzed off of the Rune Master. He's the closest target. All the other casters are further away. Our Paladin's over here on the Spirit Master. This Bone Dancer is free in the middle. We'll pick him up in a second, but we both kind of got CC'd out early. I try to just cover this Rune Master. At this point, he's their resist debuffer, so. Stopping him stops a lot of damage. He roots me, is able to get away a little bit, landed a snare before he gets out, and our arms is able to pick him up. Uh, at this point, we're trying to split here. Uh, roughing the Shaman as we run through. Finding open casters. At this point, the SM's free, uh, so I, I run and pick him up. There's third pets coming out, which is great. As you can see here, as I pause, right now all three of their casters are covered. The Armsman is still sticking down the Rune Master. What he's doing is spamming his Anytime Snare style, which causes this caster to move slowly. He can't move around the fight very well. He can't catch up. Maybe he's looking for the Warrior to peel him, but he's moving so slowly that it's hard for him to get there. Our Paladin's here in the middle of the fight on the Bone Dancer, and I'm on the Spirit Master. So all three casters are locked down. Definitely hard to get away. The only hope they have is for Mezes to come out. Um, however, the Armsman and I have already been Mezzed. And I'm not sure about the paladin or the arm, or sorry, the warrior to come and slam snare. At this point, we're just trying to do as much damage while keeping things erupted as we can. I'm doing quite a lot of damage to the spirit master. The paladin and the arson are both doing decent damage. So there's three targets being um, damaged for them. That's a lot of heals that have to go around. And they're not doing much of anything at this point because they're all getting stuff down. They can't cast at all. They can't do damage. They can't CC. They can't do anything. At this point, their only option really is to sauce here. This is a really good sauce. It allows all of their casters to reposition. We don't have anything really to counter this. So they're able to run to one side of the fight as a unit. Uh, and you can see here is the, uh, the Spirit Master and the RM and the Bone Dancers right here, I believe. They're able to just target down this third just before we can do anything to erupt them. So this is a really good play by them. Um, escaping the three tank split with the sauce and then really uh, capitalizing on it. You can see our cab running to one of these casters. He knows what's about to happen. He's just trying his best to interrupt one of them. I'm obviously running with the other ones. Uh, as you can see in our group window, they're able to pretty much instant kill the Thurg. We had no real counter to that. That was a good play by them. At this point, it's just back to sticking down casters, doing what we were doing before, wearing them down, um, slowly putting down damage while they're unable to cast. However, we, we've lost a Thurg early, and that's, that's pretty brutal. As you can see here, I just landed a flank snare on the Spirit Master. So at this point, I see my Armsman sitting on the Rune Master. So I'm like, well, this guy's close. I've snared him, so I can leave him snared, run over, and maybe try to spike down this Rune Master with my Armsman. This guy, the Spirit Master I was on before, he's not going to get very far. He's snared. At best, he gets one or two spells off, and we have a potential opportunity to kill this Rune Master. So that's what we try to do. He gets an insta-heal. I realize he's not going to die. So at that point, I don't want to invest too much time 
uh, training this guy down with my armsman. So I just go back to the Spirit Master so we can't get open. Our Cabalus is getting stuffed down by an arm, or sorry, by a warrior. So that's how his fight's been going. Again, I slam this guy, the Spirit Master. Our armsman's peeled by the warrior. And I see the Rune Master right here about to maybe get away. So I slam the, uh, the Spirit Master and I go to interrupt this uh, RM so he can't uh, get any cast off. Our Sorcerer Mez is the Spirit Master and he's going to purge both Slam and Mez, which is good for him. We're able to kind of put some damage into this Rune Master, the Armsman and I. However, he gets healed up. And at this point, the Warrior's on top of us guarding for this guy. I don't want to get slammed here. We're not going to kill this guy at this point. So I decide to move on uh, and cover this Spirit Master. Uh, the RM should still be erupted by our Armsman. Um, our Paladin's over here on the Bone Dancer, and I'm going back to the Spirit Master. Our third just died again. Uh, not sure what he died to. I wasn't really paying attention. Maybe Scald. Maybe he didn't get shields up um, after he got res, or maybe the Bone Dancer got open for a second and killed him. But here I am back on the Spirit Master, trying to land my flank chain, um, doing as much damage and keeping him snared between hits. Get mezzed off here, and they're able to uh, get a little bit of space. Uh, the SM's not able to get too far away. Um, Armsman picks up the SM. I go to RM. We're trying to just keep these guys covered. I see my Friar has a Spirit Master pet on him. So I decide to slam this guy really quick. And I'm not going to invest much time into this, but I'll try to slam this SM pet off the Friar to free him up a little bit. Um, our Sork is off frame over here to the left. Uh, I think he's near side. The Friar needs to secure it. But he's running to the Sork for the Sork to mez this pet, I believe. But if I can slam it, um, all while investing maybe like a second or two into it, and then come back to damaging this guy, that's fine. My I hit the blade turn on the pet. But I don't want to continue chasing the Friar and the pet over towards our Sork, so I just immediately come back to the RM to try to damage him and kill him. Uh, putting a little pressure, we get a uh, instant heal for this guy. However, at this point, the fight's kind of crumbling for us. We don't have a third just anymore. Our cab's getting stuck down by the armsman, and then um, our, our armsman's mez. There's casters free. SM's right here, just free balling because our armsman got um, CC'd. We're struggling, we're just trying to kill, but we don't have quite enough damage to finish them off, and the fight kind of crumbles, certainly from here. So yeah, that's a uh, the fight didn't go super well, but it's kind of an example of fighting a caster group on a Merc. It kind of explains the concept of splitting to cover casters and then converging when there are opportunities. Uh, we didn't really make the most of our opportunities. We got things low, but they got healed. But that's a, that's a concept. Um, maybe you can use that uh, in your fights. Maybe it'll help, hopefully. Hopefully it goes better for you than it did for me. Thank you guys for watching my Mercenary Class Overview video for Phoenix. I um, hope this helped a little bit. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything like that, let me know in the comments. Again, these are just my opinions, um, how I think is the best way to play Merc and stuff. Obviously, it's a versatile class. You can do a lot of other things. So uh, my word is not the gospel, but maybe it helped a little bit. Thank you guys for watching again. I'll see you next time.